So, I hope you're starting to get a handle on getting the, the 2D part in a 3D problem. Let's have a look and push on your vector thinking a little bit further, okay? I'm now giving you two arbitrary points out in space and gonna try and get you to remember some of your extension one vector stuff as well. Number one, we're looking for um, the vector between those two points and we're also looking for the unit vector that's corresponding to that. Okay, so there's obviously two bits of knowledge there. Let's see if we can remember. Now I'm gonna give you a bit of a nudge um, and the nudge is gonna be with the diagram, okay? So as you jot down the important piece of information here, you obviously don't have to write the whole question. Remember I said to you doing example one that sometimes you orient your um, 3D coordinate system in a different way just to make it more convenient to you, okay? But sometimes that 3D coordinate system is actually not necessary at all. Let me say that again. Sometimes even when you're dealing with coordinates in three dimensions, placing like coordinate axes onto there doesn't add anything to your ability to solve the question. It doesn't necessarily make anything clearer. I think it did in this case because we had to know where are our directions and all that kind of thing. But here, I'm gonna suggest to you a slightly different, simpler way of putting this, okay? Let's just take point A and point B and literally just put them anywhere we like, right? Just nice and separate it out. Um, I have their coordinates, four, seven, one, and two, one, 10, okay? Now, to get the vector from A, where's my colors, to B, I can employ some of my, and I know you guys weren't fans of this, but it's super important to actually get your head wrapped around this. We can employ some of our 2D vector thinking because even though A and B are in these weird spots, I can put them on the same plane together. So I can now consider this as an entirely 2D problem, right? Just conceptually. I can work out my vector from A to B by connecting them to a third point of reference, namely the origin, right? Because I always know, like this literally tells me where is A in relation to the origin? Where is B in relation to the origin? Okay, so if you come back to that original table that we did, right, you could state, for example, what is in component form or column form if you like, what is OA? It's a trivial thing to state, right? It would be uh, in component form, 4i plus 7j plus k. That would be vector OA. Do you agree? You could also similarly state OB in exactly the same way. You just look to 1 and 10, okay? Now, how can I use OA and OB to help me get AB? What do you think, Helen? I'll flip OA to make it like I'm OB minus OA. Huh, okay, hold on. Did you catch what Calvin just said? Because there's a lot of thinking actually going on in there. The first thing you said, Calvin, was let's flip OA. So OA goes from the origin to A. Flipping it or slapping a minus sign on the front sends it in the opposite direction. Make sense? So this dotted one here, we will write as A, O. Yes? Okay. Now, if I start from A and then go to O, all I need to do to add on to that to get to B is take my OB vector, which I already have, right? So it's a rather indirect path to get there, but the great thing about it is I know what AO and OB are, or at least I can work them out. So I'm going to pause right there. I think you can work those bits out, see if you can find out or articulate what will the vector be, and then can you remember you might need to go back to your extension one notes, how do I get the unit vector out of that, okay? Give you a few minutes to have a play, off you go. How'd you go? Did you land there? Happy times? Now, the reason why I kind of dwelled on this for a moment is that I really wanted you to understand where this composition of vectors came from. And I saw several of you who kind of arrived maybe at one of these, Layla, or even went straight to here, okay? If that was you, can I encourage you right now to pick up your pen and, and write these lines beforehand? Are they necessary? No. But do they clarify what on earth you're doing? Absolutely. And so they're really, really vital, I think, to communicating in a way that makes your working just sort of sit in a way that makes sense. Um, a, B, by definition, is A to O and then O to B. That's just vector arithmetic, putting things together, okay? When I first learned this at uni, um, people said to me, just do this. Just put your vectors 
backwards to the order and then subtract one. And I just could not get my head around why you would do that. And this is the why. I hope it's straightforward. Morgan. You, yeah, you can absolutely define it in this way. However, I think it is important you understand why it is defined in that way, and it comes from this definition. Okay. Anyhow, we get to the same result. This is actually one of the, the more basic things, so I think we're fine. How do you get from here to a unit vector? What, what is a unit vector again? It's a vector of magnitude one, right? Now, presumably, well, you can even see by the numbers, this vector will not have magnitude one. So we have to scale it. Do you have to scale it up or scale it down? We have to scale it down. It's, it's way too long, OK? So in order to work out, um, I think I called this v. Is that what I called it? Yeah? So in order to get to that v hat, maybe I should have chosen a different letter, um, I have to work out the magnitude of this vector. How do I do that? The information's already on the board. Maybe I'm slightly covering it a little bit. That was a spoiler. Okay? You just can use Pythagoras like you did before. Okay? So when you have a look here, your lengths have all been calculated for you already for each of the components. So you're going to do 2 squared, 6 squared, 9 squared. What's that give you? From memory, 121, which again, you can see, has been crafted to make this easy for you. The length of this, this implies the length is going to be 11, because you take the square root, which means that to get to the unit vector, we're going to scale down by that factor of 11, and then everything else is the same. Make sense? One last thing before you go, since we're in the theme of having more than one way to do problems, right? Um, this is the, the vector way of approaching it, but you could have also worked this out if you were like in a quick and dirty mode trying to get to these numbers, negative 2, negative 6, and 9. Can you see, just look at the numbers for a minute, how these numbers arrive without having to resort to some complicated geometry. To get from A to B, you're starting, let's do each of the components separately, 4 and then 7 and then 1, right? By definition, this vector means you add some x vector to this x coordinate and apparently you end up at 2, yeah? And then for the y, you start at 7, you add some y vector and then you should end up at 1, yeah? And then lastly, you start at 1, and then you add some z vector, you end up at 10. And hopefully you can see pretty straightforwardly why that actually makes sense, which I think is a really helpful thing just to have, not to solve problems, but to have in the back of your mind so that when you arrive at a point like this, you can do a quick sense check and say, because I actually, fun fact, the first time I did this, I was changing numbers to make the question uh, nice, right? And I computed something wrong, and I could look at it and say, no, this answer, I had a number that was bigger than 10, which is hilarious. And I'm like, that can't possibly be right, because I'm getting from 1 to 10, right? So sense checks are always really valuable.